Right. Good evening, uh, councillors, members of the public. Welcome to this meeting of the Southern Area Development Control Committee. Uh, it's all a bit new tonight in terms of microphones, so I hope everything's going to work. Uh, the white cards that you have got can apparently go into the slot at the back, any way up. They can even be laying on the top. You're going to get it remotely, apparently. <laughs> Don't worry. Emma's looking after those people whose cards have uh, disappeared already. Um, but anyway, fingers crossed that everything works tonight. But if there are a few hitches, I I'm sure you'll, uh, you'll all recover. Uh, before we start the meeting, the usual uh, fire regulations are on the uh, screen behind me and I hope on the other screens. And if the fire alarm does sound, please leave in an orderly fashion and we meet over under the canopy at Waitrose. Uh, could you all check, please, that your phones are turned off or switched to silent? And having mentioned the new cards, can you make sure, that, as ever, they are firmly pressed into the console, otherwise they might not work? Uh, members of the public, obviously, by the numbers here tonight, this is quite an emotional planning application, but this is not a public meeting. This is a meeting we hold in public. So I'd ask you, please, not to contribute other than when you're public. Uh, speaking slot. Thank you very much indeed. So um, can, can we move out? Uh, well, actually, I'll just introduce the officers before we move into the main business so that everyone knows who we have here. We have Lewis Jones there from the legal department. He's over far right, as I look. Peter Cleveland, uh, I always forget titles when I come on to this, but uh, head of development control, will that do? Louise Yandel, oh no, we've got uh, Ruth, first of all, Ruth Davy. Principal Planning Officer, we seem to be a bit down on officers, and Louise Yandel, who is the Area Team Leader for Southern and Western Development Control. Are any other officers joining us? Right, that's why I'm getting confused. Good. Uh, right, let's move on then to the uh, matters before us. Minutes of the last meeting, they have been laying on the table. Uh, are you content that I uh, sign these as a correct record? Apologies for absence, Emma. Uh, none received, Chairman. Declarations of interest, please. None before the meeting, but I believe all Hazemere Town Councillors declare a, a non pecuniary interest in the applications on the agenda. Does anybody else have an interest that they haven't already declared they wish to declare now? Uh, questions from members of the public, Emma? None received, Chairman. Do I need to turn that off when you're saying none received? It would be okay. Are you sure? And <laughs> any relevant updates, uh, Peter, from government guidance or legislation? Thank you, Chairman. I don't have any updates this evening. So we can move straight on to the applications for planning permission. And in the event of any site inspections being necessary as a result of consideration of the matter this evening, they'll be held on the 26th of September. So let's move straight on to the application for planning permission A1. WA 2017-1030, land south of Grange Road, Tilford, the temporary use of the land for two 2.5-day events. And I'm going to ask Ruth, please, to introduce this. Thank you, Chair. Um, before I start, I'd just like to draw your attention to the written update sheet in connection with the application, as the Council has been in receipt of a construction traffic management plan and a traffic management plan. As a result of these submissions, officers are re recommending that the wording of conditions two and four of the agenda are, reflected, are up, amended to reflect this. I also have a couple of verbal updates. The officer's report sets out that site setup would start on the 6th of September. However, the construction traffic management plan received has confirmed that this would, site setup would start on the 2nd of September. It is also set out in the officer's report that those, some, some people attending the festival would be staying at the Islamic Bad site whilst the festival is on. The applicant has since clarified that that is not the case. And finally, one additional letter of representation was received after the cut-off date, which raises procedural and planning issues. No additional planning matters have been raised from those already set out within the officer's report. So if I turn now to the application itself, the site comprises fields located on the south side of Grange Road. The location plan shows the application site outlined in red and 
land in the applicant's own ownership adjoining the site outlined in blue. The site is located in the Greenbelt, AOMB, LGA, AGLV and an area of historic landscape value. It is also within the Weald and Heath 1 SBA 400 metre buffer zone, the Weald and Heath 1 SAC 2 kilometre buffer zone and is adjacent to French and Common Triple SI. French and Little Ponds bounds the site and its outlying areas form part of the Weald and Heath 1 SPA and this is also a designated Triple SI. The site, you might, the site has two access points, one just here and one approximately here. This slide provides an aerial of the site and gives you a better appreciation of the site's context. I've already mentioned French and Little Ponds, and that lies to the east here. To the west, there are, sorry, that lies to the west. To the east, there are some residential dwellings, and to the north is the Green Hills Industrial Estate. This has accesses onto Grange Road and also has an access onto the Tilford Road. As you can see from the slide, the site is in a rural location. This shows you a photograph of the site itself. So this is from one of the access points, so you can see it's a flat field with lines of vegetation around. And then again, this is a view showing you the site inside the site. This is a view going west along Grange Road. So the application is for two one-off events, events that would take place, one from the 15th to the 17th of September, and one the following weekend from the 22nd to the 24th of September. The events are being held by the Our Media community who are based at Islamabad. The first event would be a youth festival to encourage participation in sport and education, and the second is for older members of the community for educational purposes. These events are normally held at Islamabad on an annual basis, but that this site is currently under redevelopment and hence they are trying to provide, a, seek an alternative site for this year. Planning permission would not normally be required for this type of event and wouldn't be required for this event at the Islamabad site. However, this particular area of land and much of the area of land around it is subject to an Article 4 direction which means permitted development rights for use of the land for any purposes on not more than 28 days in total of any calendar year, and that the erection or placing of movable structures on the land for the purpose of that use. So turning to the proposal itself and what that means, uh, the physical implications of it, from the block plan you can see that there would be a, a number of marquees constructed well, hopefully you can see there would be a marquee constructed here and various marquees scattered around the site. There would also be a running track laid out, sports courts, a car and a coach park. There would also be some overnight accommodation for security and staff. Each festival would span three days and be attended by approximately 4,000 people. In terms of hours, for both festivals, they would start on Friday at 1 p.m. and go through to 10 p.m. Saturday would start at 8 p.m. and go through to 10 p.m. and Sunday would be from 8.30 to 3 p.m. All outdoor activities would be finished by 7 p.m. There would be some indoor activities taking place between 7 and 10 p.m. and these are generally discussion forums. You'll also note that there's a similar application on this agenda and this is for the single youth event to take place on the 15th and 17th of September. It should also be noted that the applicants have confirmed that these are one-off events um, and not something that they'd be seeking to do on this site on a regular annual basis. <coughs> Turning to the key considerations, officers recognise that the site is not in what one would normally consider to be a sustainable location given its rural nature. However, 
As part of the consideration, it is acknowledged that these sites, these events would normally take place at Islamabad, which is in a similarly rural location, and therefore the traffic levels and impacts are likely to be similar. In addition to this, it is a temporary event. They are temporary events that would be one-offs only, and there would be no long-term traffic effects from the proposal. Therefore, in terms of location of development, officers are satisfied in this instance, because of its one -off, the, their one-off nature, it's acceptable. The site is located in the green belt and doesn't fall under uh, and any exceptions for acceptable development under this designation. Therefore, very special circumstances need to be demonstrated to allow the development, and I will cover this at the end of the presentation. In terms of the impact on the AGLV, ANB, and Air of Historic Landscape character, officers will acknowledge that the site is large and that there would be a significant number of people attending the festival and that there would be significant structures erected on the site. However, because these structures are temporary, the impacts on the AOMB and AGLV would have a short-term harmful impact and there would be no medium and long-term impact. And in, so in this respect, officers again think, think the development is acceptable. Officers acknowledge that in terms of highway safety and traffic generation that given the location of the development, significant amounts of traffic generation will result and this is shown in the traffic transport sta statement. However, the applicants have produced a traffic management plan in order to assist in the situation. And the measures that they have put forward are providing marshals at key points at uh, particular junctions around the site um, for all vehicles visiting and leaving the festivals to be routed through the Green Hills estate off the Tilford Road. that all vehicles travelling to the event should approach the site from the A3 Hindhead Junction along the Tilford Road, and that they will provide shuttle buses from Farnham Station and encourage people to, to travel to the site via train to Farnham Station where they can pick up the shuttle bus. The applicants have also provided a construction traffic management plan to ensure that there's no harm to amenities as a result of the site setup and deconstruction. In terms of impact on residential amenity, the key issue really relates to noise and disturbance. The applicants advise that there will be no outdoor activities after 7pm. The PA system will operate only in the late afternoon and will not be in operation after 7pm. Details of generators and the PA system in terms of sound levels and their location have been provided and our environmental health officers have reviewed those and consider that they are acceptable subject to a condition to secure those, that those details are put in place. In terms of the impact on the SPAs, the SAC and the triple SI, the applicant has submitted a habitats regulation assessment, an event environmental management plan, a protected species mitigation strategy to ensure that there is no harm to these designations and to any wildlife within the site. Surrey Wildlife Trust and Natural England have reviewed these documents and I've been in extensive consultation with them on these matters and they raise no objections subject to conditions securing that the mitigation measures that have been suggested are put in place and that these events are indeed one-off events only. So turning now to the matter of very special circumstances as the development is in the green belt and technically would be uh, um, defined as inappropriate. Um, officer of the view that there are very special circumstances in relation to this application, given firstly that the development is of temporary nature and that whilst there would be an, an impact on the openness of the green belt, this would, be for, this would be for short term and not for medium to long term. This is a one-off proposal whilst the Islam Islamabad site is being redeveloped. In addition to this, the green belt is considered suitable for outdoor sport events and certainly the youth event incorporates sporting activities and it is, the application would also be in support of a local community group. 
So on the basis of all the above, officers consider that the application should be recommended for approval in accordance with subject to conditions 1, 3, and 5 to 12 as set out in the agenda report and amended conditions 2 and 4 set out on the written update sheet and informatives 1 and 2 as set out in the agenda report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Ruth. Just before I call the public speakers, could I just remind members of the new call-in arrangements because this particular application was called in very late and there will always be exceptional circumstances but there should be just that. We're asking the officers to do more and more and to be efficient and effective and deliver a good service to our um, residents and applicants and we must do the same. So you are supposed now please to call in any application within three weeks of it appearing on the uh, weekly sheet of applications. So Will you please get into the habit of doing that? Obviously, there are circumstances. Rules are there to be broken, aren't they, at times? But please, will you make every attempt to do so promptly so that we can give the public, as I say, as efficient and effective a service as possible? So now, could I call on the public speaker? As just before, what I'm tending to do, um, I'm in your hands a little bit, but because these applications are more or less the same... I'm going to ask you to speak for four minutes on the first one, which is for the two site. And depending on how that goes, whether we have another public speaking slot, I would ask, if possible, that you don't repeat everything you've said for the first one. But obviously, if you've got new points uh, or you want to change speakers, that's, that's entirely up to you. So could I start off then with Mr Kevin Quinn, who is an objector to uh, this application? Yeah, I think oh, I'll have to sorry, come that way. Yeah. Don't worry, we're all playing with new toys tonight, so we'll, we'll get there eventually. And usually we say it's the big button. I suppose it still is the big sort of biggish button at the bottom if you just press that. And your four minutes start when you start to speak. Thank you for the opportunity to address the committee today. Uh, these applications are located on land which the local community believe is extremely important and we consider development should not be allowed to damage the openness or ecology of this environment. The council currently has some very powerful planning policies to control development, including those covering the green belt, areas of outstanding natural beauty and greater landscape value, together with SPAs, a nearby triple SI and an ancient woodland 500 metre buffer. Above all these policies is the Council's Article 4 direction, imposed in the 1950s to protect the qualities of this special landscape. An Article 4 direction confirmed at the highest level by the Secretary of State. This means this landscape has been preserved for the last 60 years from the exploits of developers. But this planning officer appears to simply dismiss Article 4, suggesting that only because of its imposition, a full planning application is all that is required. In our opinion, the Article 4 is far more important and was imposed by the predecessors of this council for very good reasons. The visionary councillors, who are the guardians of the borough in the 1950s, decided that because the landscape and countryside was so very important, they would create, in addition to Greenbelt policy, an Article 4 direction to further limit and control specifically this type of development. Seldom do you come across land with an Article 4 direction. It is against this rare background that we maintain the bar to any development taking place on this site can be no higher, with so many complementary restrictive planning policies. The officer's report states clearly that the proposals do not fit any of the exceptions listed in the NPPF and would constitute inappropriate development. We see no exceptional circumstances to overturn this. The recent court case of Arboot versus Elmbridge Borough Council 2017 sets specific precedent regarding harm to openness. Everyone agrees that significant harm will be caused if this major development be granted. 
Furthermore, the importance of the AONB must be respected and the adjacency of the SSSI must be properly considered. We support community events, but the MKA events are not local community events. They are ticketed national events to which the majority of the local community are not invited. Only a small number of the MKA are actually from Tilford. The remaining 4,000 come from all over Europe and the UK. Turning to the case officer's decision, should this case should this planning consent be contemplated, then the proposed planning condition numbers 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 and 12 are wholly inadequate. We respectfully request that the committee refuse these applications on the following policy grounds. One, the site is located within the green belt, outside any defined settlement area, as, these, as, as there are no special circumstances in this instance, then planning permission is refused. Two, the proposals by virtue of their scale and size are contrary to the paragraphs 115 and 116 of the NPPF and to policy C3 of the local plan 2002 and policy RE3 of the draft local plan part one. The proposal lies within AONB and conflicts with the Waverley local policy plan, policy C3, by virtue of its size, scale and position within the sensitive landscape. The, size li the site lies within an area of great landscape value and the proposals will harm the character of an area of historic landscape character. The planning policies state nothing about being temporary and temporary harm. Harm is harm. We, the local community, believe, believe that this one month long event will cause total chaos and disruption. We believe this application should be refused for all these planning reasons and the council consider alternative sites with less restrictive planning policies in place. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Quinn. Perfect timing. Thank you very much indeed. A model. Um, right, if I could ask Mr. Connell then please, you've got a... Right, see if you can be as, as accurate as that. Ah, no chance. The target is, is there for you, no. thank you very much. Okay. Same rules, you know how to, you've done this before, but it's just a different button. The Ahmadiyya community had been established in Tilford for over 30 years. Currently, two members of the community serve on the parish council, one of which, Mr Shams, is currently enjoying his 25th year of service, which I believe is a record. This is a local body. Greenhills is one of the large, Europe's largest tree producers in its heyday, growing 27 million trees per annum. These trees were on that site when the Article um, 4 direction was placed, so it was not a clear landscape. It was covered with millions of trees. Um, the the um, applicant purchased this date approximately 20 years ago when tree production had almost ground to a halt and most of the buildings were redundant. In early 2016, the estate was approached by the community who needed to temporarily relocate their annual e-sports event and educational activities as their current site in Tilford is undergoing redevelopment. It will go back there afterwards. This is just a one-year event for six days. This is not significant and demonstrable harm. Over the years, confidence has grown in this event. It has had very few concerns or issues. It has been running for 20 years successfully in the Greenbelt and in an area of outstanding natural beauty. Um, it, the site, incidentally, has also been used regularly year by year by the Riding for the Disabled and the French and Sponsored Ride, which in this, its final year, erected 12 jumps with over 600 riders taking part. Um, also, the estate, for a period of 16 years, in way of conserving the ecology of the area, has used no pesticides on the site and has voluntarily created significant buffer zones for wildlife within the overall estate, thereby not just conserving but promoting um, the ecology or, or quality of the ecology in the area. The reports which have been carried out by the uh, ecologists, which are part of the application um, uh, submission, clearly confirm, and as has been confirmed again by the con statutory consultees, that there will be no harm to the ecology of the site. Um, coming on to other items in terms of the traffic, the traffic will be directed through the Green Hills Estate, not to Grange Road, which the applicant agrees has deficient sight lines. 
the oh, I'm doing quite well. Um, the um, the traffic will go through the estate through a very good access onto Rushmore Strait, which has perfect sight lines. Everything has been done through the production of a traffic management plan, and through consultation with Surrey County Council Department of Highways to ensure that the impact of this event will be as little as possible upon the residents that live in the area. In terms of finding another location for this site, I do not believe a better one could be found. It is close to the historic location of the site and therefore a lot of the issues in relation to it, to it are already known, understood and have been mitigated against. The plan for, this, for the um, event when it's at Islamabad off Sheepatch uh, Road is fully understood and fits reasonably within the area and within the community. This is only a 2.5 mile um, exchange of venue and only for one period of time. I do not believe that this could be considered to cause significant and demonstrable harm, particularly seeing as the policy designations for the area are the same as that for the application site. They are an area of outstanding natural beauty, an area of great landscape value, and an area of green belt. Both locations, the historic one and this proposed one, are the same. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Connolly. Could I ask you just to turn the microphone off? Thank you very much indeed. Members, over to you. Right, Councillor Round. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> I just wondered if I could ask for more information about the Article 4 direction. I'm grateful to the first gentleman who spoke for describing it to some extent, but uh, I don't understand why it is imposed and by whom. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Round. Um, it was imposed in 1954. We've tried to Oh, well, we have researched it to try and understand why it was applied, um, and there's no published reasons for it that we have to hand. So I appreciate what, what the comments have made, and that, that may have been the reason why it was applied, but we don't have any formal written confirmation available to us that we can um, put to members of why it was applied. Um, just, just one point I'll just pick up on it's helpful is regarding Article 4 directions and the guidance we have, sort of the legal guidance we have about if members were considering applying one now. Um, and the, sort of the legal advice confirms that the purpose of an Article 4 direction does not prohibit development, but enables the LPA to have appropriate control over the development coming forward in that specific area. So the purpose is not to just to stop it outright, it just hands back some element of control for what could be permitted development. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Peter. Councillor Round, do you want to come back at all, or are you happy with that? <coughs> Not really. Ex <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I believe the presence of that direction is the only reason why we are considering this application. Is that right? If it weren't there, it could go ahead without any planning application. I think that's what the officers were right. saying. Correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. Thank yes. You. That's correct, Chairman. Yes. Um, Councillor Knowles. Thank you very much. Um, there's just a few things that, that do concern me. Um, there's been this constant by the officers reference to a one-off event or two one-off events. Well, you can't have two one-off events. And when you look at the timetable, it's two quite separate events over different weekends. It's not a one-off event at all. So I think that it's misleading to say that that is the case. Can I just interrupt there? We are looking at two events in the first yes. application. Yes. I mean, quite clearly, it's two times 2.5 It's two. It's two. Events, All yeah. of this is doubled, yes, in that, that you see when we look at the traffic, uh, 1,100 departures on the Sunday the 17th, but again on the 24th. So, in fact, you double all these numbers. And I, my rough calculation, probably wrong, is uh, 4,920 movements through Hindhead because that's where we've been told the traffic's going to be sent. This seems quite substantial to me. This, is, this isn't a small amount of extra of movements. And technically defined as inappropriate, the officer said, but it is defined as inappropriate. And I, I have to say, there are so many reasons that in here why it shouldn't take place, and then, oh, but it'll be OK. I have great reservations about this, unless I hear something different. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Knowles. Councillor Mulliner. Um, first question. Um, why are there two separate applications?
Yes, Ruth, do you want to just clarify that for the members? Uh, I don't actually know. I haven't asked the agent that question, but the one application came in for the single event, the youth event, on the 15th, 17th of September, and unfortunately three weeks later it was followed by the second application to cover the two events. I mean, presumably it may be in case committee decide that the two event application isn't acceptable, but the one event application potentially is so at least one event could go ahead. Thank you. I mean, because I'd noticed that condition seven of the second application uh, was requiring restoration of the site to its current form by 24th of September, which clearly didn't fit in with the earlier one, but what you say makes sense. I think my feeling is that if this is um, a genuine one-off in the sense of this year only, I can't see what the, what the problem is. Thank you, Councillor Mulliner. Uh, oh, Councillor Isherwood. Thanks, Joan. I have one or two concerns about road traffic. It seems to have escaped everyone's attention that at the moment HGVs are not allowed on the 287 between Hindhead and Chert. They are diverted from uh, down Jumps Road from the 287 to the Bell and Dragon and then up the Tilford Road. Two HGVs on the Tilford Road passing each other are a problem. I passed one today in a small car and I had to take to the verge to let him through. Big Dutch lorry was quite impressive. I can't see how people are going to have clear access down that road. This is the major road into the site from Hindhead. All the traffic from Farnham Station will come via Jumps Road to the site. Can't come over the big buses, can't come over the two Tilford bridges. They're weight limited, they're narrow. There are all sorts of problems there. I also have a worry that um, unless it's very well policed, people will find the way from the 287 from Millbridge down Priory Lane to Grange Road and onto the site. You can't do it. It's a, a very slow, um, what's it called? It's a rural clearway and basically a single track road. And again, I tried it this morning and five times I pulled onto the grass to let other cars by. Unless it's very well policed, there will be a problem passing Frencham Little Pond. Nothing's really been done about slow worms and snakes and bats and all the other bits and pieces. When they were building the Hindhead Tunnel, highways agency spent one quarter million pounds protecting slow worms, dormice, etc. A whole sum of money. Nothing seems to have been done on this site whatsoever to protect any of these species. Um, I find another major problem in that a vast amount of money has been spent on water, septic tanks, power units, and other things. All the cabling is there. It's been quite clearly demonstrated. Um, I wonder, was that just for one event? Or, as Councillor Knowles said, two events? Uh, a vast uh, amount of money being spent on the infrastructure for that one site. So I do have some very, very serious concerns. I look at the green belt, I look at the area in B, I look at Article 4 direction. I do have some very serious concerns. A one-off event, roads as they are, create problems. We know that the uh, site on the uh, in Tilford has coped very well, but that doesn't come through Tilford across the narrow bridges, doesn't have road restrictions that are currently in place for the gas works that are going on. And HGVs also break the rules. As I found out on the 287 the other day, they were driving through the gas works um, regardless of the fact that there was a restriction on their use. So uh, I do have great worries. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Isherwood. Any other councillors wish to get Councillor Adams? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, this is actually a lot bigger than I thought 
when I first heard about it. Um, I think one point I would like to ask is um, in respect to this traffic. Uh, we're told that there's going to be 4,000 now on each weekend. Uh, last, the first time I heard about it, it was going to be about 2,000. Now it's 4,000. But there's only 300 going to stay overnight. So where are all the other people going to go every night? Um, so they'll be leaving the site through the um, Green Hills Estate and then disappearing, presumably, uh, all over Tilford, Church, Farnham, Elstead, etc. Um, so that's the first point. Um, second point is that the suggestion is this is identical to the setup in Islamabad. Well, it isn't, because Islamabad had a school built there for evacuation during the war. So there are buildings already on site, and those buildings have been used um, by the uh, Amadeans um, until very recently uh, when we passed permission for them to have proper houses built there. So it's nothing like the same situation because this is verdant country. Uh, okay, trees were grown on it. Um, many uh, Scots pines grow by themselves all over uh, our area. So to say that this is identical to the Islamabad site is completely wrong. Um, I think the third uh, issue is that I have is that, yes, this Islamabad, as they're saying, this is a one-off site because it'll move back to the other site when the houses and the mosque, etc., are all built. So why is this application by Spincrest Limited rather than by the Amadeans? If it was the Amadeans which were making the application, I could say, yes, uh, you know, this is a one-off. But Spincrest have had this Article 4 overturned on this site. What is to stop it being overturned again next year? Thank you, Councillor Adams. Can I ask the officers if they'd like to make any comment on that? Thank you, Chairman. Um, did, did you just want me to pick up on that last point about the applicant? Or well, only if you wish board? to. It's not compulsory. Well, the, the only point I would say, say is... Um, sorry, let's talk over sorry. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the only point I would say is that the applicant is there. I understand they're sort of the landowners, so it would make sense that they would submit the application rather than the people wanting to use the land serving notice on them and them submitting an application. Um, the applicant is, is relevant because we need to know who's submitting the application, but it's, it's not as effectively a material planning consideration. We're looking at what is being proposed, and it wouldn't be a reason to object to a scheme just because of the applicant. I appreciate the, the con concerns you're raising is if they're looking at that, what might happen in the future, but we've got to look at the application before us, and that, and that alone, and that's what, what, what we're considering on that basis, and that is what we'd be granting permission for, nothing more, nothing less of, of that. Um, I'll, I'll pick up at the end on, on any other points, if that's OK, Chairman. Thank you. That's fine, Peter. <laughs> Councillor Inchbold? Thank you, Chairman. It's my understanding that development covers anything above, on or below the ground. Councillor Isherwood has detailed quite a lot of work that has been done on the infrastructure already. Could I ask the officers, am I right in thinking that that constitutes development? And if so, is it permitted development? And if not... Has planning consent been given for it? Peter. Thank you, Chairman. Yes, it's, it's been made, made aware to us as a, as a planning authority, and we have looked at it. And we understand overall across the, the estate, they're looking to um, repair, maintain their existing infrastructure that's there. There's existing electricity facility in that location, which I understand deals with one of the pumping stations on site. So it's something there. It's... It's obviously happening at the same time as this event, but across the w wider estate, you, you'll see that they're replacing gates and things like that. And, of course, if, if they're in the process of doing that, I can't see why they wouldn't do that if they're going to be having an event at the same time. But uh, we understand that it's permitted repair maintenance works that wouldn't require planning permission. That is not our formal position, but that is the, our understanding of it um, to, to date. Councillor Rich do you want to come back? Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I can't really see how putting in septic tanks 
would be um, repair and whatever. It, that surely is a new development. Peter. Thank you, Chairman. Um, this application is not discussing that. It's, it's a separate matter that we, we need to look at outside of this. It's not a planning consideration before you. They, they may require um, planning permission. We wouldn't, in, in granting this permission, that's not what we've been asked for, if it's a replacement or something like that. But w what you're raising is an issue outside of this planning application. We need to look into that as a planning authority and investigate it. But it, it shouldn't have any bearing on a decision being made on what's been asked under this application. And I'm happy to discuss that outside of this committee and with anyone that's got any greater concerns. But that's not what's before you tonight. And I can see some concerns for, look, looking at me from councillors on that point. But that's not what the application is for. Um, and we need to look at that as two separate, two separate issues. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, just before I take Councillor Hess, can I just ask the public please not to comment? It's very difficult when the officers are trying to give us an explanation. Um, Councillor Hess? Um, this, uh, I smell a rat, I think. So when are we going to hear the application for the infrastructure work that's being done that isn't related to anything on the site currently? And um, we would, have a, we would uh, be led to believe that the septic tanks are never going to be used in the future. When are we going to hear those uh, applications? Peter, do you want to come back on that? I think the important thing is to explain the, the link that between what's already been developed on that site and this two one-offs uh, that we're looking at and how the site is going to be restored at the end of it. Can you just get, give us the whole clear picture and then I think perhaps we can uh, make a decision on whether or not it's acceptable. Um, I, th I think the, the, the question, I, I mean, I, the, the wider picture in terms of what's gone across the whole site, I don't think I'll go through the entire history of that, but I mean, what, what we've got here is an application for a temporary event in the meantime, the applicants or the, the landowners are doing work to upstage, up, upgrade existing infrastructure on site. That, from initial investigation, we don't consider requires planning permission, but we will investigate it further. It's only very recently been brought to our attention. We can't instantly make a decision. Members will be aware of investigating something, ensuring we've fully assessed it before we take a view on that. There's two separate processes. That's been brought to our attention. That will be looked up by our enforcement colleagues and assessed and made a decision. It's, um, if any planning permission is required for that, we will invite that and, and seek that appropriate. But as I say, initial investigations suggest it isn't. It's repair, maintenance, and reprovision of, of what, what is already there. But obviously, when it's new, it will look like a new piece of infrastructure. But if it's a replacement, it's not. Um, I, I don't feel I can really add anything more to that, Chairman. No, I think you've been very clear, Peter. Thank you. So, Councillor Hesh, you wish to come back? On the basis of what you just said, there's already a septic tank. This is just a... Yeah, I can see from the nods that, that the answer to that is yes. Do you want to amplify? Yes, the, the, this has been queried with the agent who's advised that the septic tanks that have been installed are replacement septic tanks rather than new septic tanks. Right, I feel now we've more or less isolated the main points. I will take other speakers if necessary but I do really think we're down now to uh, getting close to taking a uh, looking at the recommendation on this one so Councillor Adams do you wish to add something? Uh, thank you Chairman. Um, I, I had listed three points which included traffic which we haven't heard the answer but um, in addition to that of course there are going to be all these cars moving on to what is effectively an open field. Now I know most of the um, uh, ground in that area is sandy um, but that means that when it's dry it gets rutted very quickly when it uh, is wet it gets boggy very quickly um, how are we going I mean at the moment the plan I believe is just to identify lines where cars and uh, heavy coaches are going to be parked is there no is there any plan to put down any surface to uh, protect the ground underneath is there any plan to put any floors in the marquees, for instance? There's nothing being said about anything being put on the ground on this site, and I'd be interested to know what the plans are for the, covering those issues. Do we have that sort of detail? I mean, we're looking to see... 
a use on this particular piece of land. That's really what this planning application is looking at. Uh, how much detail have you got of, of the structures and the parking? Thank you, Chairman. Um, we don't have the specific details of, say, the, the um, flooring within the marquee or tracking. Obviously, within any temporary event, they will they will make measures that are, that are temporary in nature to accommodate if you know if there's rainfall, <coughs> if it's soft land, and appropriate um, provision will be provided along that basis. But we don't have that that information. Thank you, Chairman. Stuck all over the site and then need to bring in heavy equipment to actually pull them off. I think, Councillor Adams, you know, having been to so many of these events, that really is up to the organisers on the day, isn't it, to uh, get the people safely in and get people out. We've all been pulled out of difficult situations by tractors and whatever. So, I, you know, I really think we're going into a level of detail, which is probably not necessary to determine this particular application. Um, but if the officers want to come back, please do. I'll take uh, Councillor Inchbold and Councillor Edwards. Inch Councillor Inchbold. I think I may be able to help with that last point. I recently attended an Ahmadiyya uh, event over at Alton, and I can tell members that the uh, layout, the, uh, the tracks where cars were going and vehicles were going were very well, the ground was well protected by uh, movable I don't know what you'd call it, but a, a hard surface that could be removed very easily. All the marquees had good, solid, uh, hard flooring in them. So I don't think that the worry about the, um, the, the, la the ground being churned up is something we need to concern ourselves with. Thank you, Councillor Richbord. I think anybody who's been to any of these events will... will agree with you on that you know they are well organized uh, councillor edwards uh, thank you chair <clears throat> I, I did intend speaking on this item actually but <clears throat> uh, my concern is is, is the septic tanks i don't think they're replaced but i think they're new okay um uh, it's been uh, um um unused since the 1950s. I can't imagine before that there were septic tanks there because it was a forestry or wherever it was. It was. Um, and it worries me that once the septic tanks are in, they can be used again. And uh, uh, we're all talking about a one-off here, and I have great concerns that this won't be a one-off. There'll be another application in due course if the buildings don't get finished at the Tilford site. However, uh, uh, I've worked a lot with the Ahmadiyya um, community and uh, I have nothing but praise to give them. Uh, irrespective of that, this is in the Greenbelt. It's got all the designations you could think of. Uh, the SSI is close by, etc., etc. Um, I don't... It says it's grade four agricultural land. It probably was 50 years ago. Uh, I'd like to see what it would be graded as now, because if I remember rightly, um, it, is, it, it is quite a nice couple of fields there. Um, however, if we can guarantee that this is a one-off only event, and, uh, and hopefully the septic tanks are removed after the event, um, I feel minded to support the recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Edwards. We can only take people at their word. It would be a terrible world if we couldn't. Uh, we are assured these are two one-off events. That's what we're being asked to judge on, to make a recommendation and to uh, make a decision on tonight. And we have to do that on the facts that are before us, not on what we think might happen two or three years down the line or even six months down the line. We have to take people at their word, and that is what we're being asked to judge tonight. So does anyone else wish to speak before we move to the recommendation? Thank you, Chairman. I haven't had an answer about the overnight traffic during the weekends. Thank you, Chair. Um, so in terms of attendees, they will, these will either be members from the local area 
or there will certainly be people coming from further afield, but my understanding is that they would be put up in various hotel accommodation. Um, in terms of how that's managed from a traffic perspective, there will be 13 marshals located at various junctions around the site to ensure that traffic goes in the cor correct direction um, and doesn't go down roads like Priory Road, but exits the site in the most appropriate way um, and continues on their, on their journeys in the, on, according to the recommended route. Right, members, I think we really have uh, finished this, this debate. Can we then look at the recommendation, please? The recommendation which is uh, on your... Well, no, I've got the... Let's do the recommendation. The is it on the update yes. sheet? That's yes. what I was just going to say, and I stopped myself in case it wasn't. So the recommendation is that permission be granted, subject to the original conditions 1 and 3, and 5 to 12 as set out in your agenda report, and the amended conditions two and four, which is to deal with traffic management, which are on your update sheet, and the informatives one to two, which are set out in the agenda report. So the recommendation, please, is to grant. Could I see all those in favour of granting permission? Uh, one. Two. Three. Four. Thank you, members. Can I see all those... Opposed? Uh, sorry, I need an, an alternative recommendation, please. Those against? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Abstention. And ab uh, one, one, two, three. Sorry, so please can I have an alternative recommendation, please? And reasons for refusing. Councillor Isherwood. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, first of all, uh, it's uh, against Article 4 direction. It's against uh, Policy 115116 of the MPPF. It's in the Green Belt. It's in the AONB. It is adjacent to um, the SSSI. Anything else that you want to add? Can I ha have reassurance in the officers that that is a suitable reason for refusing this particular application, please? Um, first of all, if we can just um, make a comment about the Article 4 direction. An Article 4 direction is something that removes permitted development rights. It's not a reason um, that you would be able to sustain in terms of refusing an application, because what an Article 4 effectively does is makes it necessary for a planning application to come in that you can then make an assessment on, on material planning considerations. Um, and in relation to... I would recommend doing sort of separate reasons for refusal for the Green Belt and the AOMB and AGLV, um, and in that respect, I would recommend... And the temporary change of use would constitute inappropriate greenbelt development. The very special circumstances put forward by the applicant are not considered sufficient to outweigh the harm to the greenbelt or any other harm. The proposal would therefore conflict with policy C1 of the Waverley Borough Local Plan, paragraphs 87 to 90 of the MPPF, and policy RE2 of the draft Waverley Borough Local Plan. And with regards to the other issues you've identified, um, I would recommend the proposed change of use would result in an intensification of the land, which would have a harmful impact on the character of the surrounding area, failing to conserve the landscape character and scenic beauty of the AOMB and AGLV, the historic landscape character of the AHLV. The proposal would therefore fail to comply with policy C3 of the Waverley Borough Local Plan 2002, paragraph 17 and 115 of the MPPF 2012, and policies RE1 and RE3 of the draft Waverley Borough Local Plan Part 1. Um, I noticed that you referred to paragraph 116 of the MPPF. Um, I would recommend that you don't use this in the, the reason for refusal. The reason being is that it applies only to very major developments in the AOMB, um, and I would suggest that probably paragraph 115 is sufficient reason enough. Thank you. Right, so Councillor Isherwood, are you happy to propose uh, the alternative recommendation with all those reasons that uh, Ruth has just outlined? Thank you very much indeed, Chairman, yes. 
And do we have, oh, do I have a seconder for that proposal? Thank you, Councillor Knowles. So can I put that recommendation that permission be refused for all the reasons that Ruth has just outlined? All those in favour of that refusal, please show. Those, oh, I get myself yes, confused yes, here, those against that recommendation. Uh, one. And those abstaining from voting. Yeah, can um, we, all those please in favour of the recommendation to, to, refuse. to refuse, could you all show again so that Emma can make sure one, she's... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, those against that recommendation. Oh, there we go. Oh, one. And those abstaining. Two. Thank you. Is that out up now, Emma? Yeah. Right. So that uh, permission is refused, and we move on to the second. Uh, item on the agenda. Again, this is slightly complicated because Ruth has already introduced 90% of it. Uh, she, I will ask her again to um, say any more if she wishes to say any more about this single one uh, without repeating too much. And I will ask the public speakers to do the same. So, Ruth. Thank you, Chair. If I could just, again, draw your attention to the written update sheet on this application. Um, we have received the construction traffic management plan and a, a traffic management plan. And as a result, officers are re recommending that the worded conditions two and four on the agenda are amended to reflect this. The officer's report sets out that site setup would start on the 6th of September. Sorry, this is a verbal update now. Um, the officer's report sets out that site setup would start on the 6th of September. However, the CTMP has confirmed that this would be from the 2nd of September. The officer's report also states that various attendees would be staying at the Islamabad, Islamabad site, but the applicant has since advised that nobody would be staying there in connection with the festival. An additional letter of representation has been received after the cutoff date, which raised procedural and planning issues. No additional planning matters have been raised uh, other than that are different from those set out within the officer's report. So, in terms of the consideration of this application, the considerations are essentially the same as those that I set out for the previous application that you've uh, just refused. There are just a number of things that I need to highlight in terms of the fact that it would just be for one-off event, so running from the 15th of September to the 17th of September, and therefore your site deconstruction would also be different because it would be in the week commencing the 18th of September. Um, other than that, really, the considerations are very much the same as previously, apart from the fact that it's over a, the whole thing is over a shorter time period, period and you have a, 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 an event spanning a period over three days rather than over six days. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. The same for the public speakers. Mr Quinn, do you wish to speak again? And uh, you're very welcome to. Yes, by all means, come and make... I'm not prepared for this, so forgive me. Uh, first point, uh, residents do not feel they've been consulted in any way by the planning officers or the applicant at uh, any time. On every occasion, the planning officers seem to have taken the side of the developer. Uh, habitat assessments, they're all generic. We cannot understand if, if, if Waverley wished to set the precedent that it's okay to do major developments with no bat surveys, no hazel dormouse surveys, allow people to cut down hedgerows, then please set that precedent and see what happens. Uh, uh, the traffic, the traffic management plan is unbelievable. It totally ignores the movements the day at night from the people going to and from the event. It talks about two accidents occurring with a 1.5 kilometer radius, totally ignores the very serious coach crash where 41 children were involved in, two th in May 2012, just outside the Greenhills estate. Uh, we don't think the planning process was followed. The applicant was given time to submit documents way after normally permitted uh, timescales. Uh, the Kingsley site in Alton is far easier and more sensible from a traffic and, and uh, uh, all other points. We have received no guarantees whatsoever in any way that this is a one-off event. 
we think it's a very dangerous precedent set that's being set on this. Uh, you know, the residents really would like to have the opportunity to meet with the planning officers to understand why all of these points appear to be flouted in this instance. Uh, the development is for a one-month period, or the first one was, this, this will be for a slightly shorter period, but we disagree that this is not a major development. This site is a 22-hectare site. Waverley Planning Guidelines says that major development is any uh, planning application which relates to a site over one hectare. Uh, I've issued a report to all the planning officers in the last few days setting out in detail where we think the planning officer statements are misleading, incorrect, and where opinions are subjective. We do not wish, as a resident community, to look at a judicial review, but there are standards that should be upheld. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Quinn. I'm sure we can arrange meetings, and I must take uh, the side of the officers here that you did make some quite um, sharp criticism, and they are unable to defend themselves, so I'd rather you came in and met with them and asked them the questions face to face and just clarified all the issues. Thank you very much. I would very much like to do that. Thank you. Okay. And now I've got Mr Trevelyan who wants to come and speak instead of Mr Connolly. Or is... Yep, Mr Connolly again. Thank you. Again, if you could try and make new points, but um, yep. it's up to you. Um, the points I make will solely relate to bits of information which we don't recognise as part of the application and statements which have been made which we, we believe are unfair. Firstly, nationally renowned ecologists were appointed to make um, studies of the site. Um, the site, because it has been a forestry site, it is not rich in habitat, albeit habitats have been formed by the applicant around the edges to try and improve the site. There will be no harm to breeding birds, there is not a, 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 a dormice environment they've been looked for and they haven't been found. And even though there is a slight possibility of there being reptiles on the site, part of the management plan is that the site will be studied before the works take place and any reptiles found will be put in a special area. All this is reported on in details. This is not a generic um, uh, uh, set of reports. They are specific reports carried out by professional ecologists. Next item, no hedgerows have been taken down within the application site. There is a misconception about this. Um, the um, fences around the whole of the Green Hills estate are undergoing renovation and replacement, 70% of which have been done. That does incorporate the, uh, around the perimeter of the application site, but as I have shown through photographs I submitted to the planning authority, um, this, this uh, uh, maintenance, plan maintenance, is taking part everywhere. So this is nothing to do with this site or this application. It is a landowner looking after his asset in a responsible manner. Um, the uh, septic tank. There used to be portable toilets um, in the location of the septic tank by the reservoir because there used to be 250 workers on the site. Um, replacement septic tanks have been provided elsewhere on the site, not just on the application site as part of the maintenance. It is unfortunate. I think it has coloured the views of the committee. Um, this is just bad timing. Um, next item is um, in terms of harm, harm to the Greenbelt, harm to the AOMB. Because there are buildings currently on the existing Islamabad site, doesn't necessarily mean that there'll be less or greater harm because the extent of the event is the same. The amount of marquees is the same, the number of people are coming the same. The designation of that land in planning terms is exactly the same as the application site. There is absolutely no different. There is tracking for the cars. Um, they will be on a, a proper temporary um, uh, stall, uh, standings. Um, and there are flaws in the marquees, as one of the councillors will have noted from visiting one of these um, events. Um, Right, in terms of uh, future applications, you can turn down a future application. This application is a one-off for this period of time. You'll note that it's only just on this one occasion that the current Islamabad Centre in um, Sheephatch Lane is being um, refurbished and extended and all the work's carried out. That's why the event is being proposed for this time. That's why they want to locate the event in this position. For them, it'd obviously be better from a logistics point of view if the event was next to their head 
headquarters. The next item, it seems that there is a contention that there may be a profit motive in this. Um, there is no profit motive in this because the owner of the site is actually, um, and I quote from a text which he would have read if time had allowed, is that any surplus funds received for the use of this land will be used for the wider Tilford community, including the village shop, where the forthcoming post office startup costs will be funded by this event. Um, this is an event to try and help a local community body. This is not an event which is there for the profit motive. It is a temporary event. Thank you very much, Mr Connolly. If I could ask you again to turn off the microphone. Mem <laughs> well timed. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, right. Uh, members, over to you. Now, I don't really want to rehearse all the, the points we've, we've made before. We've got the same land. We've got one event rather than two events. Obviously, there will be a difference uh, to the timing of clearing up, as, as uh, Ruth or Louise pointed out. But apart from that, we're looking essentially at the same site. Does anybody wish to add anything? You feel free to do so, but I would not like to rehearse the whole thing that we've just done for the two events. Right, that's very brief. So we, can we move straight to the recommendation then? I'll do this very slowly. <laughs> <laughs> So I think, we, do we have to amend the recommendation because we haven't got the deconstruction bit in the, this recommendation, have we? Or have we? As it's, as it's set out Sorry, on the, on as, the update sheet. Sorry, as it's set out on the um, update sheet, yeah. Right, we don't need any additional information about, uh, as it's the one-off mm -hmm. of, of taking away the uh, of deconstruction. Site deconstruction is what I wrote No, down. that's the, the, the sort of variation in timing of things mm, yes, is all covered in the fine. conditions. So the deconstruction right, has to be fine. done, I think, by the 24th of September rather right, than the 1st of October, right, etc. In that case, we move straight to the recommendation that permission be granted, subject again to conditions 1 and 3, and 5 to 12 as set out in your agenda report. The amended conditions 2 and 4, which are set out in the summary sheet, and the informatives one and two that are set out in your agenda report. Can I see all those in favour of granting permission? Okay. And all those against granting permission? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And abstentions? One, two, three. Thank you very much. In that case, permission is refused. Do I need an alternative a recommendation, please, from somebody and reasons? Councillor Rishwood, what are you going first again? Well, thank you very much, Chairman. Uh, for the same, exactly the same reasons, I would recommend uh, refusal of this application. Um, I hope I have a seconder out there. It's with sincere regret that I go for this recommendation. Uh, I just think it's wrong place, wrong time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you have a second for that? Rec oh, Councillor Knowles, yes, you did indicate. Right, in which case, can I put the alternative recommendation subject exactly to the, uh, the same uh, conditions and reasons that uh, Louise read out last time, that permission be refused? Can I see all those, please, in favour of refusing permission? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All those in, uh, against that recommendation? And any abstentions, please? Uh, three. Thank you very much indeed. So that is the end of the agenda. Thank you very much indeed for attending. Thank you, members of the public, for being so cooperative and the speakers for being so prompt.